Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dunray again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to continue doing Unity videos and I'm going to focus on installing a new package which is called the Immediate Window. I want to show you what are some of the advantages of using that, how you can use it for your own projects and why I think it's one tool that I think everybody should have. Alright guys, so let me show you how we can download the Immediate Window. Let's go ahead and click on Window, then go into the Package Manager then click on advanced and make sure that show preview packages is enabled after you do that you can just search for it once you find it you need to download preview that 31000 this is a version that is available as of now and i'm using unity 2018 1.0 f2 so make sure that you have that version and if you don't have it just install the version that they have at the time once you install it, you're going to see basically an install option in here to install it, and then you'll see the up to date. Once that is installed, you'll see a check mark. Now we can close out of this window. And the next thing that I did, I mapped it to a keyboard shortcut. You can also pull it up if you wanted to do that by going into a window and then analysis. And then look at the media window. Let me show you how we can add a shortcut pretty quickly. We can go into Unity Shortcuts, search for IMM for immediate. And then just basically map the shortcut that you wanted to use. I want to use, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to use Option I. So now that I have done that, I can type in Option I and bring it up. Awesome. So I'm just going to focus on this area and show you. So this is the immediate window you see. So Reset will allow you to reset everything that you're typing. Play would allow you to basically write a snippet. It'll, it'll basically run that snippet. View private will allow you to see private members when inspecting objects, just like the toolbar says. And then you can go into full script mode or single line mode. So why would you need an immediate window? And an immediate window is helpful when you want to write code and test your code pretty quickly. It's basically for things that are pretty short. For instance, if I wanted to see, let's say that I wanted to search for something that was in the hierarchy, I could simply do game object, that fine. And I can type in a Spectrum Manager, which I happen to have in my hierarchy. And then I can just hit play. And you can see that it shows you everything that is available. I was able to find the, the actual game object that I was looking for. If I were to type the if I were to type that again, and by the way, you can use the up arrow key to look at previous previous commands. Let's say that I typed in and I have a typo and I hit enter. Or I hit play right here. You can see that I'm getting a null. And that's because it didn't find that. So if I go back here and I just hit up arrow, you can see that I can go in and look at multiple commands. Oh, this was the right command. This one is the incorrect command. So I'm gonna type in the right command one more time. I'm gonna hit play. And you can now see that everything that is available on that, I can expand this. I can look at all the properties. I could collapse the properties. I can look at all the methods that are available. If I wanted to say, okay, I wanna set this object to active or I wanted to set it to the active. So what I could do is I could say, okay, now that I found that game object, I want to call the active method. So I'm just gonna say set active. And then in the set active, I'm gonna pass in a false. And I'm gonna hit play one more time. And you can see that I can see now it's getting disabled. And I'm not even running the game. So I'm gonna hit up arrow one more time and I'm gonna just set it to true. And hit play. And now I'm not getting the object, and this is normal because you can't really access an object that hasn't been, that is not enabled. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable it myself. Excellent, so what else can you do with this? So let's say that I wanted to write more code. One line, it's fine. I could also do things like game object, that fine, by tag. So if I say game object, that fine, by tag, I can type in a tag in here. So let's say that I use the default tag and hit play and I'm getting an error because that method doesn't exist so now that that method doesn't exist we can go in here and say okay fine we tag and then we would need to specify the tag so the reason why that didn't work is because it didn't find the it didn't find the method that I'm trying to call it's called find we tag and then we gotta pass in the name of the tag which I did so it's gonna hit play one more time and let's see, error, the game object does not contain a definition for find with tag. Let me do it one more time and make sure that that works. The other thing that I can do here is I can reset everything. And now we can hit play one more time and we should have a clear. So we're not getting anything back. 
is just saying tag default is not defined. And the reason why I'm getting that is because that tag doesn't exist. We can look at, we have on tag, we have finish. Let's say that we had the post process associated with, let's say the finish, and we wanted to search for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say finish, and I'm gonna hit play. And you can see that I now got that game object, and that is actually the game object called post process. So the other things that you can do that is really cool with this tool is I can say, okay, you know what? I want to get the spectrum, the spectrum manager or any other object. And let's say that I wanted to look at the sample. So I wanted to look at other data that this provides. So if we go ahead and, and open the spectrum manager, I'll show you what's available. And in the spectrum manager, I have a public variable called samples and it basically has an array. So let's say that I wanted to do that through a snippet. So that I wanted to do a game object that fine and then when I'm when I'm doing a search, I'm gonna search for a spectrum manager. And then I want to store that in a variable. So I'm gonna say var spectrum manager game object equal, and I'm gonna put in semicolons. And then now that I find it, I'm, I want to print the samples. So I'm gonna say debug.log. And if you remember, there was a samples property. So I'm just gonna do I'm just gonna do samples and I'm gonna use index zero because I wanna read the first, basically the first value. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna type in semicolon and I'm gonna hit play and see what happens. And we can see game object does not contain a definition for samples. And the reason why we're getting this is because we need to get the component out of the spectrum manager, which is tough type spectrum manager. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say get component. A spectrum manager and we'll just do a semicolon there and let's try this one more time and this is not going to be the game object this is going to be the manager so I'll just do a spectrum manager as the variable we can delete that and let's see play and see what happens now so now I'm getting the value of zero let's say that I put in here the value of 100 and we rerun this now we're getting the value of 100 so the cool thing with this is I'm actually writing code against the game objects that I have in the hierarchy without actually running the game, which is really, really powerful. The other thing that I can do here is I could say return the spectrum manager and put in semicolon at the end and hit play. And you can now see everything that is available in the spectrum manager. If I don't do a return, I won't get any data. I will just get the basically what's printing, what is printing on the console. And that's the other thing that is really helpful. I'm actually writing to the console as I'm writing in the immediate window without actually playing the game. So if I go ahead and hit reset, let's go ahead and reset and hit play one more time to play it. So this is the Spectrum Manager. This is the class that I created. I'm inheriting this class from Mono Behavior, so I'm gonna get some common properties that I get from Mono Behavior. So one property that I have that I know from samples that is mine that I implemented was samples. And if I expand this, I know that samples has an array. If I go in here and hit zero, this is not gonna re this is not gonna refresh in real time, but I can go ahead and reset it and replay it, and you can see that the variables are now getting reset. I can see all the different items in the array, and, and this is really powerful. Like I said, because you can write you know a lot of code, and then once you feel happy with this, you can basically just copy this over and put it in an actual script. So the other thing that I can see is I can see the other properties. So I know that this this game object is enabled. I know that it has a transformation. I know that it has a game object. I know that it has an audio source. So if I go to that game object, what I happen to have selected now, I can see the audio source that is associated with it. And then I can actually see it here and I can expand it here and look at the volume, look at which, which song, which music is associated with that audio source. So this is really, really powerful when it comes to that. The other thing that you can do in here as well is you can look at every single namespace that is available through on the editor. So I can look and say, okay, I wanna look at the Unity engine. I wanna see what's inside of the Unity engine. So I can actually enable this. And if you hover over it, it'll tell you, click to have the namespace Unity engine be used in your current in your current context. So if you wanted to have things that were available through the Unity engine and have it available in your context, so you can type it right here, you can also double check, double click it to bring it in. So if I expand it, you can see everything that is available, available there can also scroll down and look at other things. I can look at, for instance, I can look at the Unity Editor UI. 
I can look at the Unity Engine. I can expand and look at the Unity Engine UI and look at everything that is available there. Let's say that I wanted to look at one of these options. I could double click it. And what we can do, let's go into, could not get a property enable exception is being thrown and an invocation. And this is okay because I really don't have a drop down in my view right now. But you can, you basically get the point. You have all the different namespaces that are available. You can look at what's available inside of the shadow and you can also use it, you know, when you're writing your script. So if we wanted to do something different, we can actually go in and we can look at the some of the system utilities. So if I go down and we look at the system, for instance, we know that we have regular expressions. We know that we have link expressions. I also have system dynamics and it has a lot of different things. So one thing that I could do here as well, let's say that I wanted to use something from system. I could do something like system the daytime. And let's say that I wanted to print the daytime basically the time that it was now and I could do that and do go ahead and hit play and see what happens and we're saying non invocable member the time because this is actually a property it's not a meta so it's gonna hit play one more time and now you can see that I'm that I'm printing the day and time as it is right now I can also do a debug.log here and say okay I want to know just the day as of today so right now is you know the 20 20 seconds so you can see that that's showing me the 20 second and i can go ahead and so that's basically what i wanted to show you you can experiment with these as much as you can yeah i have a lot of different examples that we could that we could do but i think this is enough for this video all right guys thank you very much for watching this video i really appreciate your time and if you guys have any questions please let me know also don't forget to check out gamedev.net they have amazing resources for game developers and don't forget to check out my Patreon page where I'm posting information about what's happening behind the scenes. Also, early access to source code that I'm prototyping on a daily basis. Thank you, guys.